So I got groceries delivered. Ordered six potatoes, or so I thought. I guess I ordered six pounds of potatoes. So I guess today we're making potato gnocchi. Yeah, so I have a ton of potatoes. Sort of not terribly upset about it. There's a lot of things you could do. You can make mashed potatoes and freeze them. Or you could do like what we're gonna do today. We can make lots of gnocchi. I'm not gonna make a huge batch today, but this is something that is super easy to make. You could sort of blanch them in hot water, cool them down, throw them in the freezer, package them into Ziploc bags, and then you can keep these in the freezer and just toss them into boiling water. They're already cooked and it's boom, a quick meal whenever you want. So this is something really good to make, especially now it's egg, it's flour, it's potato, and it's a little bit of salt. And today we're just gonna cook them up really easily with some tomato sauce that I have frozen that I made the other day. And I'll just kind of show you how in a weekday I will sort of whip together something quick with just stuff around the house. So let's get into making potato gnocchi. You can make gnocchi with lots of things. You can make it with ricotta instead of potatoes. You could blend spinach up and make a spinach gnocchi. But today we're just gonna go real basic. Now the difference with a gnocchi is that as opposed to making orchetti or a pasta dough, where we wanna work gluten in and have texture like that, this is the opposite. We don't wanna activate any gluten in this. We want them to be soft pillows that almost kind of dissolve in your mouth. The way we work this dough is very different. This is actually not a, a pasta technically, it's a dumpling. So you, we have to think a little bit differently about them. But let's just get started. The first thing we have to do is we have to roast off potatoes. So right here I have about two pounds of potatoes. And these are small potatoes, so maybe you have a big potato and you only need to make two or three. It's up to you. Again, you can sort of feel this thing out. The idea here is that we're going to use the potatoes as the base. And then we're gonna use as little egg and as little flour as possible till this kind of just holds and becomes a dough that we can form. By doing that, we're really creating a pillowy, soft, light texture that will still hold up and have texture and like won't dissolve and fall apart, but it's kind of not gonna be like making orichetti or like a pasta dough like we've done. So first we got the 350 degree oven preheated. We're just gonna take our potatoes and just poke them. These are russet potatoes. We're gonna poke them and then we're gonna salt them. So now we're just gonna toss these into the oven and we're gonna cook them, I'm guessing 40 minutes to an hour. Really until I can poke them easily all the way through with a knife with zero resistance. That's the foolproof test to make sure that these are done. So we have to wait for those to cook and today I'm gonna to use my double zero flour. This is what I'm hoping is gonna create an extra pillowy texture. And of course you could use all purpose flour, you could use semolina flour, whatever you have will probably work. And we're gonna use this and we're gonna use one egg. I think one egg should be enough. And an egg yolk is probably what I've seen most chefs use to make this, but we're using about two pounds of potatoes. So we're gonna use one egg, but if you wanna use just the yolks, you would use probably two yolks. So it's up to you. You can make this however you want. There's a lot of those don't even have egg in this recipe. The egg just creates more structure and texture and helps bind. So we're just gonna do one egg. So I have my egg, I just scrambled it real quick. That's what we're gonna use. And then I have some of the flour. I have a cup of flour or about 100 grams. 100 grams, a cup of flour. 
roughly the same amount. And I'm just gonna sprinkle in as I go and really not worry about how much I'm using and just understand that the time of year, the humidity outside, the moisture in your house will all make this amount change. So that's why amounts don't matter with doughs like this. You really feel it out. We got our flour, we've got our egg. Fork is gonna be what we use to make our indentations in the gnocchi. And we're just gonna do real low tech gnocchi. And we serve it with a tomato sauce that I should probably take out of the freezer right now. I just have a half portion that I've frozen. This is like a Sunday sauce pomodoro kind of thing. So I'm just gonna make gnocchi pomodoro. All I need to do is loosen this out of its container, let it defrost, and then um, just bring it up to a boil in a pan and it's ready to use. Under hot water, rinse the frozen sauce container just to loosen it from the sides and then get that into a saucepan. Take a little bit of water, you can clean out the inside and then pour that over the frozen sauce, put a lid on, Put the heat on low and let that slowly defrost. Let's check on these potatoes real quick. You can see the resistance, so that means they're not done yet. Get them back in. So now we just wait till the potatoes are done. And then we're gonna use our ricer or you can use a food mill if you have that. And while they're still warm, run them through the ricer and then start to make our dough. It's really best to do this while the potatoes are still warm. So now we just wait. The sauce has defrosted, but now it's too loose because we added water. So let's pump the heat up and start to reduce that down to the right texture. Potatoes are still not done, so back in for a few more minutes. That's what you want to see. No resistance. See? So now what we want to do is cut these guys open. We can scoop out the potato get it into a bowl, and then you've got potato skins. You can make potato skins with this. Add some bacon, some cheese, some sour cream, pop it in the oven, melt that off, and um, you can use these potato skins. You could put it in a stock bag and make stock with it. So you got some options there. You don't have to waste anything. And I'm gonna wear a glove because it's gonna be a little hot, and um, I just want a little protection. You could let it cool if you want to, but it's better to work with it hot. So I've got a bowl, a spoon, and a knife. I'm just gonna cut these guys open. Or you can just eat the potato skins because they're delicious. So we've got our potatoes. Now we've got our gnocchi kind of set up here. So I got a bench scraper, I got my fork, I've got my ricer, my flour, and my egg. So let's just get started. We're gonna start to, we're gonna rice the flour straight onto the board, then pour the egg right into it, then start to work the flour in. They're still really hot, a little bit hot. I just want to keep them hot, but I don't want them so steamy before I add the eggs. So I'm just going to let it cool just slightly to the touch and then start to add the egg, start to sprinkle in the flour and start to work the dough. And by work, I do not mean knead. We are not looking to knead this and activate gluten. We are just looking for the thing to come together into like this pillowy, light, beautiful thing. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Once I add the egg I'm gonna, and the flour, I'm gonna start to chop in the flour just like we did with the orichetti. I'll start by adding a few handfuls of flour, get most of it in there, and then just start to work it into the dough, cutting it the same way as we made the orichetti dough. Scrape off all that egg from the bench scraper and then just keep adding flour until the dough comes together into a ball and it's not sticky at all. And you wanna incorporate all the ingredients really well but you don't wanna knead it. That's sort of what you see me trying to do here.
So it's nice and pillowy, it's soft. It's not sticky. If it is a sticky, I still have some left and I can just sort of coat the outside with and then it feels really beautiful. So I'm just gonna let it chill for one second, a few minutes, and then we could start making them into little gnocchi. So roll out a small portion of the dough, use your fingertips and sort of spread them out to stretch that dough out into a little row. Add plenty of flour. And use the bench scraper to cut even portions about the size of your thumbnail. And then roll those into balls. Then roll those balls over the fork and you should have beautiful gnocchi. Then dust them off with flour, get them into a tray. We've got our gnocchi ready to go. I probably could have used a little bit more flour to be honest. These are super delicate. That's why I was adding so much as I go. You gotta flow with it. So let's just drop them in some water. I've got the water boiling. I've got my sauce hot. As soon as these float, they'll be cooked and we'll just toss them in some pasta sauce. Get plenty of salt into that water because there's not much salt in the gnocchi. The sauce is now reduced to the right consistency. Drop your pasta into the water and cook them for two, three minutes. Now get the pan on medium high heat. Add some of that tomato sauce to the pan, get it hot. As soon as the gnocchi start to float, drain them and get them into the saucepan. Then just toss it together, get that sauce coated on the gnocchi. And then you're ready to serve. Sorry guys, I need a plate this time. They're perfect. They're not falling apart, they're not gummy. They're pillowy, they're light and airy. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You could pound these down, that's how light they are. If you add too much flour, they might be dense. Don't add enough, they might be hard to work with. So it's a matter of feel and knowing what to do when something might be not right and how to fix it. And because I got six pounds of potatoes, looks like I'll be making this pretty often for the next couple of weeks. That was quite yummy. I hope you guys try that. If you do, make sure you tag me on Instagram, the food freak with two Ks. Always love seeing what you guys are doing, seeing your progress, makes me real proud. As always, thanks for all my patrons scrolling up on the screen right now. If you wanna check out my Patreon, there's gonna be a link down in the description. Your support in these times means the world to me. So, love you all. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.